Hi there, my name's Mr Butler. I'm the head of PE at Cold Youth School. Um, thanks for listening. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the PE courses that we offer for the students when they get into year 10. So we've got two different options. Option number one is called OCR GCSE PE and option number two is called OCR Sport Science, which is a Cambridge National, um, sometimes described as a vocational course, although this one is not a BTEC, okay? Now, for GCSE PE, first of all, I just wanted to talk to you about the three elements to the course. So first of all, you've obviously got your theory element, which is worth 60% of the final grade. Now, with the theory, the students spend two hours a week in the classroom in year 10. And then when they get into year 11, they'll spend one hour a week studying. And basically, the students sit two one hour papers in year 11, and that's where they get that that mark from that 60%. Secondly, there's the practical element. And here, the students are assessed in three different sports, their three strongest sports. Just a quick word of warning there, it can't be free team games, or it can't be free individual activities like cross country, for example. It has to be a bit of a mix, a bit of a blend. And altogether, each sport's worth 10%, um, with the practical, obviously, you know, equaling 30% in total. So where the, does the other 10% come from? Well, this is the coursework elements. And what the students do is an on, ongoing project called an performance uh, on either themselves or somebody else. And basically they have to create a bit of a, a project, a bit of a portfolio where they assess the strengths and the weaknesses of themselves or another uh, performer and then they create a bit of an action plan applying the theory that they've learned as they go through the course and that's worth 10% of the final grade. So first of all just to quickly talk about some of the theory bits in year 10 it's quite anatomy and physiology based you can see there the students are going to look at the skeletal system and the muscular system and then obviously the cardiorespiratory system and they'll look at the effects of exercise on those two systems they do a bit of movement analysis as well so that's where the levers and the planes and axes work comes in and then in terms of the physical training and optimizing training they look at the components of fitness they test themselves uh, they analyze themselves against normative data and then they look at types of training that they could, they could take part in to maybe develop um, each aspect of the fitness. Um, towards the end of year 10, they obviously start to look at how you can prevent injuries and treat injuries too. As we move to the right hand side of the table, you can see the year 11 content is very different. So first of all, the, the students are learning about participation trends in the United Kingdom uh, between different social and economic groups and maybe some strategies that can be used or are being used to get more people taking part each week. Um, the commercialization of sport bit looks at the influence of media and sponsorship on elite sport. And then the students start to look at the skill acquisition section. So what, what is skill? How do you learn skills? How do you practice them? How do you prepare for sport? How do you set goals to get the, the best out of your performance? Um, and then obviously towards the end of year 11, they start to look at health and fitness and diet and how um, a proper diet can obviously develop your sporting performance as well. In terms of the practical, I've already mentioned the free sports the students can be assessed in. Now, these are the sports. I think cross country is being added now as an individual activity. But as I mentioned before, it could be either two team and one individual or two individual and one team. We teach quite a few of those activities in school, so it's quite easy for us to assess the students to get evidence on their performance. But if they just take part in an activity that we don't teach in school, like lacrosse or boxing, um, or golf, for example, then the students basically have to bring a video towards the end of the course and then we would assess them ourselves or we bring in a coach that maybe would assess them um, via that video evidence. Right, let's move on to the sports science, our vocational course. So I've already mentioned it's quite a different way of studying. This is assignment based work generally, and there's four different modules that the students complete. Only one of those modules is externally um, moderated marked you know it's an external one hour exam basically it's, it's a paper that the students have to sit um but generally they're completing assignments in lesson time on the computers or doing a practical investigation and then typing up and the students will hand work in will mark it and then they'll respond to that feedback 
I've already mentioned that very limited external assessment. And one thing that's worth mentioning is you don't actually get any credit for your practical ability in the course. Um, so if you're playing at a really, really high standard, you know, you're not going to get a mark for that. <laughs> um, it's more about the actual evidence that you create through your assignments. So sometimes the real, the real high flyers, the elite athletes, uh, the people that are taking part in a lot of sport choose GCSEP because that's where they can get the credit for their practical. But if you find exams difficult and you maybe don't play sport for that, you know, that, that high level, or you're interested in, in going into the world of sport and maybe not doing A-levels, then the vocational course is a really, really good one. So I've already mentioned the sports injuries exam. The students generally sit that in year 10 and year 11. They can resit it as many times as they'd like to. Um, there's applying the principles of training. There's modern technology in sport and there's the body's response to physical training as well. And as I say, those assignments would be completed over the two year period. Now, just to mention some expectations or maybe some entry requirements for the different courses. If you're doing GCSEP, we always recommend that you are playing sport. That would be for a club or it would be for the school or you're regularly participating in extracurricular um, or you're regularly going out rock climbing, for example, because you're going to get a better mark. Um, if you're not playing sport at all, if you're not really that interested in the practical, then potentially the sports science or another course is going to be better for you. Homework. We always set the students homework at the end of each theory lesson, so we'd be expecting them to probably complete at least half an hour of web based homework each uh, after each lesson. So you can imagine in year 10 they've got two lessons. That's an, at least an hour, maybe two of homework that they'd have to complete. Um, and the students must accept as well that the courses are only half or under half practical. Therefore, at least half or under half of the time, sorry, over half of the time would be spent in classrooms. They're not going to be out on the football pitches or in the sports hall or on the netball courts doing practical every single GCSEP lesson. So where can it all lead you? Well, there's obviously a, a massive amount of jobs now in sport and leisure and well-being and physical activity. But just a few to mention, lots of the kids go off to do um, university courses after they study GCSEP and A-level. So sports scientists, um, sports study students, sports rehabilitation is obviously quite a big one, sports psychology. There's just a massive range of university courses now. PE teachers, obviously sports coaches, this is a good course to get you a grounded in that. You might be a professional athlete or you want to be a professional athlete and you want to really like develop your, your performance or so GCSEP would be a brilliant one there. You might want to go into the world of sports administration, you might want to be a personal trainer, a fitness instructor. The, you know, it's pretty endless the list and both of the courses give you a really good grounding um, if you do want to work in the world of sport or leisure or perform at the highest standard possible. OK, so thanks for listening. If you've got any more questions, please contact me at school. Thank you. All right, you can talk again.